Welcome to your sixth week at the Oxford Union. Um, this evening we are delighted to be joined by Corey Taylor, the lead Hi. singer of Slipknot and Stone Sour. I'm just going to ask you three very uh, short questions. Okay. Um, if you don't mind, I'll just be very quick. Um, so, where do you get the inspiration from for your music? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, basically, life, you know. I'm, I'm, I've never been the guy who worries about creating stories because I've had so many things happen to me in my life that I really feel like um, the tank is full as far as like inspiration goes. You know, I've been through incredible highs, uh, incredible lows, and um, you know, when 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 you really get to do the one thing that you've wanted to do your whole life. It gets you excited, and I, I think that's another thing that is, is inspiring for me, is the fact that after 12 years professionally, this year, I'm, I'm still able to do it, and still able to, to do it and have a host of people get into what I do. So, to me, there's so much that I want to do that uh, I, I, don't, I, I think life itself is just enough inspiration. I, I know that sounds like a stock answer, but at the same time, it's like, I, I, I kind of beat the odds, you know, so I'm very, very happy to and, and honored to, to be able to still do this and have people get excited about it. Um, I don't think I've peaked yet, so I guess that's a, when you need inspiration, just look to yourself. And um, you're talking about people getting really excited about it. How have you dealt with the fame? How have you coped with that side of it? Yeah, I've got enough people around me that make fun of me that I, I can stay, you know, pretty grounded. I mean, look at me. You know, I wasn't going to be on the cover of GQ or any <laughs> crap like that. I, uh, you know, I, I still, the, the only time that people really change in this business is when they got into it for the wrong reasons. And I've seen it happen a million times. I've seen people completely redefine themselves because they achieved monetary success, uh, fame, you know, things like that. And they become completely different people or they gave themselves up to something that they just kind of been holding back yeah. as far as like uh, the, some weird attitudes, some egotistical issues and whatnot. I've kind of known who I am for a very long time and that doesn't mean that it doesn't shift and change and evolve, but I mean, I've been famous since I was 15, you know, just in Des Moines on a local level, you know, and then as things got, you know, bigger and bigger and bigger, I, I did my very best to adapt to it and, and remember that I got into this to make music. I didn't get into it to kind of establish myself or, you know, reaffirm what I needed for myself, you know. Obviously, there's a little bit of ego that has to go into this, being a performer, being a front man and whatnot, but I'm enough of a class clown that I can kind of look at myself and, and poke fun at it. And I have enough really good friends um, from growing up that I never lost, you know, and they know that I never changed. So I, had, I, I just, I, I have really good reaffirmation, I guess, reaffirmation from my family, my friends and whatnot to, uh, to stay as grounded as I can, you know. And this is hilarious to me. You know, the fact that we're sitting in the Oxford Union and I'm going to speak in... <laughs> It's ridiculous, you know, and just the fact that people requested this is baffling. I got to be honest. I mean, this will probably be the most time that someone has used the F word on these grounds <laughs> to these people. You need to know what you're in for. I got to be honest. This is this is this is fucking hilarious. All right. <laughs> so, what do you think of the Oxford Union then? I am uh, I, I'm blown away. You know, I, I'm a uh, I've been a fan of history my whole life, and uh, I was very passionate. In fact, I was uh, at one when, at one time when I was younger, I wanted to be a history teacher. So, whenever I'm somewhere that you can feel the history, you can feel the uh, the legacy in the air, the walls around you. Like I mean, you're surrounded by it. I get very humbled, and I, I get very uh, ecstatic and excited. You know, and I want to look at everything. I want to smell everything. You know, I mean, you can just you can feel the heritage here, and, and I, and I, um, I, I'm very, very honored to, uh, to have been asked to come here. 
Um, sorry it took me so long. I hear that there's been quite a few requests, yeah. which is very <laughs> funny to me. Um, it's uh, it, it's just one more thing that I can say I've done, you know, and I'm very very uh, very emotional about it. Really, to be honest, it's um, it, it's it's one of those things that you never thought you'd be able to do. You know, it was never even on the list. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, you know, just being here and knowing that it's a reality and knowing that there are people who actually want to hear me say something about life, about, you know, what they can do with their lives. It's a big responsibility and I take it very seriously and uh, hopefully I can infuse some humor yeah. and uh, hopefully, you know, try and speak as eloquently and intelligently as possible. But at the same time, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's an honor and uh, I'm just very happy to be here. Well, no, thank you very much. It's not a privilege to have you here. Oh, so. come on. Thank you very much. I wore my good jeans, so we'll be, <laughs> we'll be fine. <laughs>